major global conference focusing on anti microbial resistance concluded in Jeddah with significant global pledges from countries to act to combat the rising health challenge that is associated with it. In a nutshell, AMR is when microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, fungi, fun word to say, and parasites change in a way that make them resistant to the drugs that treat them. This means that the drugs no longer work and that the germs continue to grow and cause infections that can be difficult or impossible to treat. Before I go on, you are you aware of this as like a thing? AMR? Yeah, superbugs. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, Definitely. super bugs. Okay, great. Maybe yeah. I should read more. Anyway, AMR is a major <laughs> global health threat right now. It kills over 1 million people a year. Primarily, AMR is caused by the overuse and misuse of antimicrobial drugs like antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitics. So what the world needs is sort of like a coordinated cross-border and collaborative approach to stopping AMR. The latest step in that effort, probably longest wind up in any news story history, is an effort that just took place in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, the fourth global high-level ministerial conference on antimicrobial resistance, wrapped up on November 16th. The conference led to the adoption of the Jeddah Commitments. These commitments lay out practical, actionable, and cross-sectoral steps to combat AMR. Kind of a big deal. Read about it on the UN website. I think the World Health Organization and UN UN are collaborative organizations. And and so kind of a big international win for countries that participated in this conference. So kind of cool. Flew under the radar on the Saudi news for me this week and saw it and thought it was kind of cool. It is really cool. I actually spoke to some people in the UK that were preparing to come to the event a few weeks ago. No, a couple of months ago now, actually, just asking because this is an an entity that does quite a bit of research in the UK, mostly science research. And somebody in their delegation was connected with me because they'd never been to Saudi before. And this organization hasn't actually worked with Saudi before. They work all over the world, but not very much in the Middle East and definitely not in Saudi. So I sat with them and we talked a lot more about kind of the healthcare sector in Saudi Arabia and just kind of social transformation and the vision and so on. So I kind of knew this event was taking place. I think it's incredible. It's so important. And I think you mentioned the most important thing, but maybe it didn't come out as, you know, I think what we really need to highlight is to use antibiotics responsibly. So I remember, you know, like when I could just walk into a pharmacy and get some amoxicillin if I had a sore throat here. And that that's probably part of why a lot of the world is struggling with this is because people weren't using antibiotics in the way that they were supposed to. And so what, what the world is doing now is saying, actually, we haven't had a whole lot of breakthroughs in antibiotic technology and new antibiotics haven't really come on the scene. So we're going to be up against some bacteria that's developing resistance to it. And that's going to be a problem. And the only real way to kind of stop that is to come together and make pledges on how we're going to handle using and just kind of what's the word when the dispensing the medications that people need. The, The really the most important thing about antibiotics is finishing the course and people don't do that. And I remember, I don't know if you ever watched the show House, but like I remember House really stressing how important it was to finish your antibiotics because otherwise you still have parts of that bacteria alive in you and it actually just kind of learns how to live and it's emboldened by like it's near defeat and then it just lives on (laughs) and it it, it mutates, right? So it's terrifying. So I think Basically, back to the serious bit. Well, that's serious too. It's actually terrifying. But His Excellency, the Minister of Health, uh, Fahad al Jalajil, said the conference outcome provides critical building blocks for member states and international bodies to significantly act against antimicrobial resistance. And that builds into kind of the political declaration on AMR adopted at the high level UN General Assembly meeting a few weeks ago in New York. So there's a AMR quote, I think it's called One Health Learning Hub and a regional antimicrobial access and logistics hub in Saudi to foster global collaboration, which is going to improve access to essential antimicrobial diagnostics. So I think it's as exciting. I'm really, I'm really happy for two reasons. A, that we're talking about this because we need to, because it is a global health crisis on the horizon if we don't do something about it sooner. 
but also because I know for a fact that by being a part of this, Saudi Arabia is making new friends in the research world that want to come and be collaborative here in a time where we need to collaborate instead of trying to think about, oh, we don't work with that country. We've never done that. We don't know that. It's actually, it's a convener in this space. And that makes me very happy. Yeah. It's so weird that I just did that whole kind of intro and run through and then like had totally forgotten that I almost lost my hand and died in April of this year. My firstborn son also almost died from bacteria infection. And part of the problem was that I was getting the wrong anti antibacterial sort of drugs in Saudi Arabia for whatever it was. It ended up being sort of a, a variant of MRSA, totally the worst week of my life, really the worst like three weeks of my life, actually. And yeah, I mean, like part of the problem was that I was getting the wrong antibiotics and I had a lot of antibiotics. I mean, like three weeks of them. And then they finally figured out that the MRSA was not responding or was resistant to the ones that I was getting. They made a special cocktail combining two. It did the trick. And then they gave it to my son, who was in a different hospital at the time. And before I left, they were super curious about all the travel that I had done and where I came from. But before I left, they were like, dude, you really have to make sure this time you take every single last prescription amount of antibacterial stuff, because if you don't do it, it could come back. You are very lucky to have this hand. As we discussed, I would definitely have gone with a hook, assuming that I had survived the ordeal. But yeah, I mean, just kind of crazy stuff. And it's everybody asked me, the only question that they asked me is, where did you get it? And I'm like... Dude, no one, we, we will never know that. It's a bacteria, actually lives on the skin of a lot of people and doesn't do anything to them, but, you know, kind of kind of did a lot to me. The hand works great. Golf game is awesome. But yeah, take it seriously. I'm, I'm kind of glad that we're talking about this now. Serious issue. <laughs> yeah, so really good point. Take your drugs, people, if they are prescribed to you, and don't take don't antibiotics for things, especially viral issues. That's another thing that is common where people like with COVID, we're like, oh, we have COVID. Let's take, you know, antibacterial stuff. And it's like, nah, it's not going to work. So, but you yeah. know, there <laughs> is a culture. So I've changed my attitude to healthcare a lot after having spent the last 10 years in the UK. I was part of the culture here, which is similar in Saudi, which is similar to the one in the US where we do over medicate. We think that, oh, let's let's go to the doctor quickly and let's get the drugs or let's go to the doctor quickly because, oh my God, I don't want it to get worse. However, a lot of things you just can't actually fix with drugs right away. You can reduce the symptoms by taking, you know, painkillers and by doing all the other stuff that you're supposed to do. But some things, you know, antiviral medication can help if it is a virus, if you get it within the first like 24, I think, to 48 hours, but not always. And there aren't antiviral drugs for everything. But with antibiotics, you really should never take them unless somebody actually does a culture and confirms that there's bacteria, because otherwise you are reducing the effectiveness of antibiotics. And it's a shame that, you know, we have to kind of suffer. I get that. But actually, the approach in the UK is you know basically i see it as if you're not dying just don't come to the hospital because you're gonna get better because our bodies work really well at fighting these diseases and these infections and i think that it's a very very different attitude to healthcare, and it's because in the uk it's national health care but they don't have as many resources so they don't distribute the medicine and provide the care in a way that is as efficient in a place like Saudi, for instance. However, at the same time, the attitude is the right one, I think. And so you, you learn how to manage symptoms, you learn how to manage expectations in a way where you're not afraid of being sick because our bodies are meant to get sick and get better. But when you need the real drugs, that's when you, know, that's when you need to go to the hospital and they won't work if we continue to go and take them when we're not that sick. And I am a doctor, so I'm gonna say I have an authority on this topic. <laughs> you're, our, you're the 2030 official staff doctor. You're our Surgeon General. 
but yeah, no, I mean the, the culture thing, like the, once I got to Georgetown here in the U S they were like, did they take a culture? I was like, I have no idea. I was just like laid up in this unnamed Saudi hospital. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll give you some antibiotics that we've seen this before. It'll get better. No culture. So that when I got back to them and they said, dude, this looks really bad, man, you're going to be here for a while. Tell me about the hospital that you were staying at and what you got and what drugs you got. And I didn't bring the paperwork with me, so I had no idea. And they were calling these dudes being like, where is this guy's culture? He's in bad shape. And, you know, I don't think they got anywhere, but I'm here doing the 2030 episode 37, you know, my body kind of won it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, no, super interesting. Congrats to the organizers of this conference. I mean, and you know, you're not going to get any thank yous. And if you do your job, well, people aren't going to end up thanking you and be like, wow, what a win, you know, it's just, we're just going to go on with our lives, but huge kind of deal and good to see the global collaboration on this because I don't want to, you know, have to deal with this. (laughs) These like super bacteria, whatever you call them. Just no, for the record, again, I'm anyway. not that yeah. kind of doctor. But anyway, <laughs> I still know what I'm okay. talking about. <laughs> well, but you're more of a doctor than I am. So, yeah. 